Welcome to the April 10th, 2023 Selectman meeting. Please rise for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public announcements, Mr. Haggerty. Mr. Chairman, you always know I have public announcements. I always do, and that's why I always go to you first. All get right, the, thank you. <laughs> get the best first. All right. Oh, shucks. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I just want to give a huge shout out to all the Abington residents who came out to last Monday's town meeting uh, and participated uh, in the annual town meeting. Uh, we were able to pass the FY24 budget and so many other great things. So uh, thank you to all the residents uh, and look forward to uh, even bigger. Uh, showing in uh, the special town meeting uh, in the fall. Um, before I give my, my big public announcement, uh, the first one is um, there will be a, just a reminder that there will be a town-wide yard sale um, on Saturday, April 15th um, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, it will start at the North School. Um, this is something that uh, Abington Celebrates is putting on together. Um, and you'll see the lawn signs going up. So really, really cool. It's a, in an effort to uh, raise some funds for the uh, Founders Day uh, celebrations uh, and the fireworks. Uh, and lastly, here. Uh, friendly reminder to Abington voters that the annual town election is coming up on Saturday, April 29th, 2023, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Beaverbrook Elementary School. In keeping with tradition, the Abington Republican Town Committee is hosting their annual candidates forum on Wednesday, next Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, at 7 p.m. here at the Town Hall, here in the Carter Room, uh, for all candidates uh, for office in the upcoming town election. The forum is an opportunity for local candidates to share their experiences, visions for the future, and answer questions on issues facing Abington. I have been granted the privilege to moderate the forum, so I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a great forum. Uh, all candidates have been invited to participate, and I'm excited to announce that voters will hear from all selectmen, school committee, planning board, board of health candidates, and more. The Abington 19th, oh, excuse me, the, the April 19th, excuse me, uh, the April 19th forum will be recorded by Abington Cam in front of a live audience and all residents, voters, and supporters of candidates uh, are welcome to attend. Questions for candidates can be submitted in advance by emailing abingtonrtc at gmail.com. Again, abingtonrtc at gmail.com. And, uh, and also, you can also uh, uh, submit questions at the forum as well. Uh, questions must be Abington related and relevant to the office uh, pursuant uh, da, 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 a politically motivated personal and or inflammatory questions are not allowed. Uh, local politics is nonpartisan. Thank you to all the local candidates for stepping up to run and represent Abington. We look forward to hearing from you. And just a final reminder, uh, the, Abington C, uh, the Abington's RTC Forum will be uh, Wednesday, April 19th at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall. Good luck to all the candidates. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Tim. Also, in regards to the upcoming election, absentee ballots for the annual town election, Saturday, April 29th, 2023, are now available. If you are unable to attend the election, you may request an absentee ballot or vote early. Please provide an application or a note with your signature requesting that a ballot be mailed to you. You can mail that to the town clerk, 500 Glenowitz Way, Abington, Mass, 02351. Postcards will not be sent for the annual town election. Postcards are only mailed for state, federal election. You can also get an application for an early ballot at the Secret Secretary of State's website. The deadline to apply for an absentee or early ballot by mail is 5 p.m. on the fifth business day prior to the election, in this case, April 24th, 2023. Any questions, you can call the town clerk at 781-982-2112. Thanks. Mike? Nothing. I just want to take a minute to thank everyone who came out to support the Hug Foundation. Uh, hockey game versus the Boston Bruins alumni at Rockland Rink this past weekend. 
Uh, thank you to all the local businesses that uh, supported this event, uh, Webster, Timber Lane, Abington Ale House, Cape Cod Lumber, Glen Isle Point, Martin's Restaurant, Trufant Real Estate, and I know I'm missing some, but I'm sorry, but uh, thank you to everyone that uh, did support that. And if you were there, you heard Todd Angeli, the Bruins anthem singer, sing, and he rocked the house. It was unbelievable. So uh, we had a great time. It was a full house, and um, raised a lot of money for the Hug Foundation. So thank you to Abington and Rockland. OK, so any public comments, Mr. Moderator? Or are you just here just to? Okay. And it is 635, so we have a request for a new all alcohol common vehicular license and entertainment license for Maritime Services, LLC, DBA, the Abington Depot, 101 Railroad Street, Matthew O'Connor, manager. Please come up to the podium. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we open yes. the public hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Public hearing is now open. So, welcome and um, congratulations on your business venture. Thank you. Why don't you uh, introduce yourselves and give us a little bit of information on what you're doing. My name is Matthew O'Connor and this is my wife Michelle Small. Um, we purchased the Abington Depot off of Kathy Small. Kathy uh, I mean, it's Kathy, uh, yeah. I'm, O'Donovan. O'Donovan, that's my actual last name. <laughs> O'Donovan. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new venture for me. Uh, Michelle's been in the uh, restaurant industry um, for 17 years. She actually worked at the Abington Depot. I've worked in restaurants over time, but um, I'm more of the uh, mechanical side of the operation. Uh, so we're, um, I worked with Kathy for a long time at the Abington Depot. Um, and we went up for sale. Uh, we were really interested because it's an establishment we frequented, frequented quite a bit. Um, we enjoyed the, the people that came in there and just the overall atmosphere. So we try to keep it exactly pretty much as much as I can be Kathy. I want to try to um, be, keep it as, as it was with some, obviously we're doing a deep clean, um, doing s small renovations, buying some new equipment, things like that. Um, but overall it'll be pretty much the same. Um, we're keeping the menu similar. Um, some some changes just a couple on the menu but everything else the same a lot of the staff um, have contacted us to come back almost all of the bartenders and wait staff um, want have are interested Great. to come back I think only two um, have didn't want to so um, we're hoping as soon as if we, this goes through it goes to the ABCC and um, we have a few more punch list items to get through and open the doors great um, no issues from the police chief No issues from the health department. We talked to all, to all of them. Um, they, the health department said they would come in after once um, once this right. goes through. They all said they'd be after. Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, it was properly advertised. Any questions from the board? Have either of you ever held a liquor license? No. Before? No. Are either you uh, TIP certified? We both are. We, we have. Any other questions? Uh, what's the target date for uh, to reopen? We're hoping mid to uh, mid to late May, depending on how long the turnaround is in Boston. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. We close the public hearing. So a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we grant an all liquor license to the Abington Depot, 101 Rail Railroad Street. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Good luck. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Time being 640.
We have a request for a livery license for one vehicle, Yosef Ramani, 4 East Battery Street. Would you like to come up to the podium, please? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to open the hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Um, the ayes have it. I'm not sure. Is this? Um, I don't know that it's necessarily a public hearing. Yeah, public. it didn't have to be advertised. Mm -hmm. So, um, why don't you explain what you're doing, please? Okay. Yeah. No. I, I have a little bit of English. Okay. Because I tried to do something. Now, um, my name is Yusuf Ramani. Just I buy this home in uh, September 2022. I move in here, it's a nice area, and uh, I have a uh, limo, just I buy this limo just uh, like month, last month, for the winning the job in the airport and the paper with the call and everything. Now, when I want to pick up the customer from uh, the airport by call or by company, I need permits from the uh, Abington town, that means we don't have any issue, any problem, anything for the parking under my car or anything. That's why I need this permission for I, before I go to to complete my application in the Massport, Boston. Okay. So you need the um, approval from us before Massport yes. will approve you. I see. Okay. Anyone? What's the address that you're parking the limo at? Yeah, 4 East Battery Street. 4 East Battery? Plenty of room to park it? Yeah, this is my home. I have the driveway, I have garage. All right, he's got a picture here, too. Oh, was the one in the thing? Yeah. Sorry. Is that, is that the limo, that car there? That's my car. Looks like from we got communication from Nancy that there's no no issues from the building department or uh, the treasurer or tax collector for for the town. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion? Do you want a, a motion to close the hearing? No, there isn't. This is not technically a public hearing. Okay. Um, it's just a request before the Board of Selectmen that this did not have to be advertised like a liquor license okay. as a public hearing. All right. Do you need something from Major to... I would entertain a motion to approve the license. Okay. Uh, I will make a motion uh, to uh, to approve a uh, livery license uh, for one vehicle, Yusef uh, Romani, uh, 4, e, uh, 4 East Battery Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Good luck to you. Good Thank luck. you so Thank you. much. Good luck. Uh, All set. All set. So uh, Nancy will do a letter or? Yeah, Nancy. Tomorrow? You can call her tomorrow. I call her tomorrow? Yep. Yeah. Give her a call in the morning. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay. No problem. Good luck. Thank you. Motion to approve the minutes from March 27th. <clears throat> I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Review of railroad grade crossing study report. Scott, you want to lead this? Well, you guys, um, as you remember, we had the um, traffic engineers from Traff Info in to do a presentation um, a while back. What we've received from them is sort of their final report with some recommendations. Uh, within the final report, there really isn't much changed from, um, you know, what we had seen and what we had talked about at the, at the, um, public, at the meeting. 
but you'll see on the report that you do have the, the uh, pages 13 through 19 mm. do have the recommendations that they make on, on what to do at the different railroad um, grade crossings. So they, they mentioned whether or not, you know, the, the, the standards have been met or not met and um, what they would recommend that the uh, MBTA and Keolis does to get everything back up to the standard. And in many of these cases, it's, you know, it's just a matter of signage and painting, um, but there are a few that, um, you know, and particularly the North Ave um, stop where they would recommend that we do a little bit more as far as uh, whether it might be a um, quad gates, a quad or, gates or um, you know, certainly make it, you know, remove any appearance of a crosswalk where there shouldn't be one. Um, maybe extend a guardrail to make it a little more uh, difficult to cross over without going, um, you know, and go on to the tracks. But, the, you know, for the most part, like I said, it's signage, it's, it's painting on the streets. It's, you know, I think it's my recommendation that if, um, you know, if this board is okay with it, that we send a letter from this board to the new head of the MBTA and say, look at, you know, we've, we've done this study, we've paid for our traffic engineer as a, revolt, as a result of, you know, several incidents, and we'd like you to take a look at this and make the necessary changes. We do also have a few extra recommendations that, you know, I think we should put in there, um, which would be over on Summer Street. Um, well, they do mention the gate. They do, so. Yeah. So um, what Scott and I had talked about that we should probably ask for the moon and hopefully then we could negotiate something. So possibly ask for quad gates everywhere, uh, extension of the guardrail and uh, fence on Birch and North Ave. And um, definitely want a, a gate at the sidewalk on Summer Street. Yeah. And then reach out to um, the new director and see what he says and start with that. They're not going to give us everything, but if we ask for everything, then they may say, well, we'll give you two sets of quad gates, and then we could say, yeah, well, we probably want that upper arch and you know, we, north. You we know. certainly want to point out to them that, you know, um, that the Birch Street, North Street area there has, you know, some issues. It's obviously, you know, as we heard from the engineers, that it's the 11th worst crossing in, in the Commonwealth out of all the 270 or 280 yeah. great crossings. So I think we want to make sure that we highlight that and bring it to their attention that, um, you know, we, we think that these anomalies have to be addressed and they, they shouldn't, uh, the answer should not be, well, they meet or come close to meeting a standard because that, uh, that standard obviously isn't working here. When uh, we have uh, 30 total incidents on this line and 18 of them, 60% happen in Abington and 10 of those, 60% or more than 60%, happen between North Ave and Birch Street, I think that's enough for them to at least take a look at it. I think that's a good idea that we reach out to the uh, new MBTA general manager. I yeah. think that's good. Um, if I could just make a rec recommendation, I think it would uh, be I think it would be important just as a, a government partner with us um, that we also keep in the loop uh, the state rep our state representative and senator and state senator um, on on our recommendations to the. MBTA I think they should well. be included, uh, copied on the letter. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. No. Probably the only way that we're going to actually get that letter. Well, to where we exactly. want it to go. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, th and that's yeah, the thing. Right. And that's that's why I wanted to make sure that they were. I agree. Kept in. And um, we will copy the um, new state auditor because she's aware of this and she wants to help us any way we can. So I think by putting their names on it, our state rep, our state senator, the state auditor, yeah. they may look at it quicker than just coming from this board of selectmen. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, I know, I, I don't know if we've done that in the past, but I, yeah, that would, yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. 
So and, they, the, and from this study, I'm just reading here just for people watching at home that, so they, they reviewed all the Abington crossings and they, they presented to us that the, the biggest priority for us pu pushing for safety measures on the crossings are for North Ave and Birch Street. Correct. They they, they did a study and then they made recommendations on all of them. But I, I don't know that I wouldn't characterize it as them saying you, you know, you should take care of this, this, and this first. Yeah. But, but but yeah, I think essentially, yeah, we asked them and they did look at all of our grade crossings and they made recommendations on all of them. And those ones are obviously are the ones that are our highest priority yeah. because of the biggest as, as part of the study just I'm I'm wondering I thought something was done about this but I know on Birch Street there was uh, in the in the study here they were talking about um, the lack of lighting mm. is wasn't was that something that we updated though yeah didn't, didn't uh, DPW yeah. do that I know I know Star. Alex and I had sent something to I Scott. think uh, State Representative Allison Sullivan was the one that finally was the one that was able to get that light turned on Okay, that's what I thought. It was a new, it was a new light that was put in okay. by the power company, and, and so, Allison was, you know, the one who got them to finally do it. But perhaps it's not working. Okay, is so, so could this be an additional one that they're talking about? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm gonna, t I'll talk to John Stone and see if they know whether the one that was installed is just not operating now, or. All right. Or if they, or if in fact, if it is operating, if they're looking for an additional light, yeah, we'll get some clarification on that. Yeah. Could I also could I make another recommendation as huh? well uh, on top of this letter? I think it would be good uh, if we brought in Representative Sullivan, Almeida, and uh, Senator Keenan in to to have for us to have a dialogue with them um, and moving forward with the MBTA Mass DOT, so we can we can collaborate together. If we did like um, mm -hmm. a subcommittee so that we don't have to bring them into a meeting, they could you can do a conference call or something during the day. That's a good point, too. Well, I think um, my opinion would be to send it to like your recommendation to me was to send it to the new director, yeah, and copy them and um, start there. I mean, this director might reach out and say, Yes, let's look at it. and. Yeah, exactly. You know, let's give him the shot. Yeah, give, let's give us. them the opportunity. Right. And it's a new administration, right, exactly. too. Let's give them and the opportunity. Yeah, so um, and, and since, here's the thing, since like, he started today, actually, yeah. I think we should at least reach out with the letter, with what we would like to see. If we don't get a response, then it's time to bring in our state rep and uh, I, state senator. And I, I would, I would. I would do them first. I would loop them. I would loop them in at the same time that we do. Oh, them. oh, yes, we yeah, will. Uh, yeah. But I mean, if we don't get a response from the MBTA, then we'll have them get on the MBTA. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Well, I I just think that it would ha have them basically harping with us yeah. right out of the gate because um, I know that was the problem in the past that it was like we've. We've tried to go to the state before. We've gone to the MBTA, and they're like, "Oh, we're not going to listen to the municipality." And that's what the Senate, the well, state rep and senator. Then maybe for. we can. Uh, we'll CC them on this letter, and we could send them a separate note. You know, <coughs> please follow up on this and yeah. see if you can get something. Yeah, we could do something like that. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah. But I think we owe it to the new director to have a chance to maybe help us exactly where they didn't before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing he's probably got a. He's um, a went on pile of. Ones. <laughs> good pile uh, we of did money. find out from the auditor in a conference call on Friday is that the town of Beverly, or the, the town, mm -hmm. is going through the same thing with some great crossings as us, and they mm -hmm. have a group up there that's trying to do the same thing. So, her opinion was. And she had five people from her office on this call. Yeah. Her opinion is that the MBTA is going to stop listening to us. Okay. And she's go going to be working on, uh, she doesn't audit the money. She audits the policies, okay. basically, stuff like that. And uh, Rick Collins brought up a good point. There is no avenue for the town to appeal anything from the MBTA. Mm. If they say we meet the minimum standards, that's it. But 
there needs to be an avenue that we could appeal. Well, the minimum is not working, obviously. Yeah. We need more than the minimum. And that's one thing that the auditor's office is already working on. Towards. Well, that's great. That's great to hear. Yeah. So. Um, what, the, you said it was Beverly? Beverly, oh, yeah. all right. Because yeah. I know with North Ave, I was shocked that, like, the number 11 and most, like, yeah, exactly, dangerous yeah. crossings. That's scary. Which, I, and I think that as part of that conversation, it was noted that, um, there's not even a mechanism for, I think they, they looked at the top 25 yeah. and they recently had uh, rolled out a, their, the MBTA capital improvement plan for the next fiscal year. And within that plan, there was nothing to address even the top 25 mm. most critical in which we're obviously well wow. within. Yeah. So, so that was a, you know, kind of a disturbing little factoid that came out of the meeting that I, I think it you know it's important and I'm glad to see it's on somebody else's radar yeah so Scott will uh, draft a letter yeah I'll draft it up and I'll, I'll distribute it for everyone to look at thank you Scott okay. thank you and um, like I say every week this is the moment everyone waits for is the town managers report I know I do. And <laughs> Just because we'll, that means we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Just for Tim, I made it brief. <laughs> uh, all right, so well, I'm glad to say um, town meeting was a success. We had no problem with attendance and reaching our required quorum of 150. So thank you to all the boards, the committees, the department heads, and um, the, the attendees. You know, your, appreciate, your participation is greatly appreciated, and, and frankly, it's absolutely necessary. We wouldn't be able to um, do, do our work without you. Uh, but now the town meeting is over. It's time to start preparing for a special fall town meeting. So um, at the end of July, I will most likely ask this board to open a special town meeting warrant for a meeting to be held in October. Uh, at this time, we know we have the fire department, DPW, building project, debt exclusion article. Uh, we expect an article or multiple articles for proposed zoning changes for um, the Southfield Redevelopment Association. And I'm sure there'll be additional housekeeping articles that the town will insert, um, as well as citizens' petition articles, should any be submitted. Uh, it's important to note that when the time comes, this is a special town meeting, and as such, any citizen petition articles will require 100 signatures of registered town voters to be valid and included on the warrant. Um, we will obviously update our websites and get that information out in plenty in advance. Um, I will then ask the board to close the warrant sometime probably at the end of August. Uh, this will give the Planning Board and the Finance Committee at least three weeks into September to hold their hearings and meetings. And um, <coughs> I will also ask for a special town election at the time because as this will be a debt exclusion, it will require a ballot. So we'll probably do the ballot uh, two weeks after the actual, or, or a week or two weeks after the special town meeting. So uh, just so everyone knows, uh, we're talking about the fire station DPW building. So that has to be approved at town meeting, and then it has to go to the ballot, correct? You could go either way, but it does require both. Right. It requires, it requires both. both. Right. It requires a two-thirds um, approval at town meeting and a majority at a ballot Right. because it's a debt exclusion. And you can do it either way, because Rockman just did it the mm -hmm. opposite way. Um, I personally prefer doing it at a town meeting first to get the feel. Well, I think it's important to have the debate and have the opportunity to exactly there. before you Let vote people on ask yeah. the questions. Yeah. So. so we're so close, Scott. Will we risk losing money if it doesn't pass the town meeting? As far as setting up the election, that may never take place. Um, yeah, this, it's quite possible, but you would, I mean, either way, if you did it before the election, you're still spending the money too. Well, well, I'm saying, mm -hmm. if we put it, if we didn't do it at all, if we didn't need to, if we put it further out than two weeks. There's a time frame that we have mm -hmm. to hold the election, I believe. 
I don't no, I, I didn't see that. I, I can look at that, but I don't believe there is. I think we could hold it off, but I think the I think it's important to have the town meeting, have the debate, have the discussion, and while it's still fresh, have that ballot vote. And I can get you the numbers, but my guess is it's probably a you know, four or five thousand dollar expense. I don't know that it'd be much more than that. Um, certainly you could wait, but uh, let's let's say it didn't pass it. Um, town at special town meeting mm -hmm. could we still do it in at the ballot box and then try to do it again at annual town meeting and or would that be too far away um, I would ask council if we could do that uh, you, you maybe could do it it sounds like it's a, it's an end run and I don't know I think if I think if we find that we don't get a two-thirds vote at town meeting then we need to Recess. Yeah, I think we need to look at what's going on and what we're doing, and, and find out and what, then possibly why we didn't get that vote. In the, know, what is what is it that we have yeah. to, you know, redo? Make the changes if we had yeah. to, and bring it back in the spring, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I had you know some discussions earlier looking at you know it's currently a fifty-eight million dollar price tag, which I think it probably you know would be in the language of the ballot that you know fifty-eight million plus principal and interest so um, if you're going to be that specific on the ballot but yet if it didn't pass town meeting we probably it's probably because of the cost so mm -hmm. I think that we'd be looking at redoing the ballot anyways okay but again you know this is I'm putting it out there now there's plenty of time for discussion I do think that we'll have um, you know uh, sit down with the moderator and and um, town council and and others before we actually come down with with the actual dates on on what we're doing but that's probably the timeline um, I think the the SRA the Southfield redevelopment is going to be looking to come in and do some zoning changes right around that time um, and and I know that I talked to um, to Andrew uh, the finance director and, and he was also looking that that would be you know a mid-October would be an opportune time especially if we found that the um, that the state budget comes in better than what has been um, proposed by the governor so it would give us an opportunity to allocate any additional funds to so uh, some other projects that will be getting underway now that the annual town meeting is over is include the uh, north and center school disposition so I have a meeting with the consultant on the 21st we will um, be discussing and meeting with several developers to discuss some um, different development scenarios that will make the project economically attractive and viable for the developers while still meeting the needs goals and requirements of the community uh, additionally the finance team and I will be getting back to work on our financial policies uh, it, wanted to make note that we do currently have some very comprehensive policies in place we're not without policies um, the goal is just to introduce some new updated policies with current best management practices that will provide fiscally responsible set of guidelines for the finance team in the finance committee to work with them um, as promised at the annual town meeting the goal is to have these policies in front of this board for final approval uh, by the end of the fiscal year we're holding you to that we'll see <laughs> Mike, you're always welcome back. <laughs> it could be your read my lips moment. <laughs> Where it all went down. <laughs> I said I'd have them. I didn't say you'd approve them. <laughs> Is there anything else, gentlemen? I would like to make a motion we adjourn this meeting. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> meeting adjourned.